Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and we have already discussed two important regional systems of human rights that is the European system and the American system. This is the third discussion where I am going to discuss the African system on human rights. We have to focus on two important aspects here. The first being organization of African Union that is OAU and currently it is only AU African Union. And then we have the African Charter on Human and People Rights 1981. The biggest difference between the European and American versus African is that we have commission as well as court but here we are discussing only the commission that you are understanding when we are discussing in my later slides. With that I am taking you to the first slide. The Organization of African Unity or the famously known as OAU is an intergovernmental organization. This was founded on 1st May 1963 and the headquarter currently is in Addis Ababa which is in Ethiopia. The OAU charter had 32 articles and this charter is signed by 32 member states on 25th May 1963. Now if 32 member states have signed what is the purpose of this particular charter? The same is discussed in Article 2. Article 2 has two subclasses in it. The first subclass is discussing about five important purposes of this particular charter, whereas the second subclass is discussing about six ways of achieving it. Now, what are the purposes? The purposes are to promote the unity and solidarity of the African states to coordinate and intensify their cooperation and efforts to achieve a better life for the peoples of Africa, to defend their sovereignty, their territorial integrity and independence and the fourth one which is very very important to eradicate all forms of colonialism in Africa. That was one of the major objective and the fifth one to promote international cooperation having due regard to the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which happened in the year 1948. These are the five major purposes. How to achieve these purposes is discussed under Article 2 subclass 2. There are six important types of coordination or cooperation required between these member states. They are the political and diplomatic cooperation, economic cooperation including transport and communication, education and cultural cooperation, health, sanitization and nutritional cooperation, scientific and technical cooperation and finally cooperation for defense and security. One last but a very important information that you need to remember is the organization of African unity that is OAU was disbanded on 9th July 2002 by its last chairperson that is South African President Thabo Mobiki and replaced by the African Union. Currently it is not OAU, it is AU that is African Union. This charter has given several rights to the people of Africa and I have listed them under three main headings that is the civil and political rights, economic, social and cultural rights and then people's rights and group rights. The civil and political rights are right to freedom from discrimination, equality, life and personal integrity, dignity, freedom from slavery, freedom from cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, rights to due process concerning arrest and detention, right to a fair trial, freedom of religion, freedom of information and expression, freedom of association, freedom to assembly, freedom of movement, freedom to political participation, right to property. The important economic, social and cultural rights are right to work, right to health and right to education. The important people's rights and group rights are family protection by the state, right to equality, right to self-determination, to freely dispose of their wealth and natural resources, right to development, right to peace and security and a generally satisfactory environment. Now if you want to remember the articles, you can mention that article 2 to article 14 discusses about civil and political rights, article 15, 16, 17 are discussing about economic, social and cultural rights and article 18 to 24 are discussing about people's rights and group rights. Now the interesting part is this particular charter also had certain number of duties. Let's look at those important duties.
while discussing the regional systems of Europe or America, we just had rights given to the people. The interesting part of African system is there are duties also. The important duties are duty towards family, society and international community, duty to respect others' right, collective security and common interest, duty not to discriminate fellow beings, preserve the harmonious development of the family, respect family and parents, duty to serve the national community by placing both physical and intellectual abilities at its service, not to compromise with the security of the state, to preserve and strengthen social and national solidarity, to preserve and strengthen national independence and territorial integrity of one's country and to contribute to its defense, to work to the best of one's abilities and compensate and to pay taxes in the interest of society, to preserve and strengthen positive African cultural values and in general to contribute to the promotion of the moral well-being of the society, to contribute to the best of one's abilities to the promotion and achievement of African unity. These are the important rights that we need to remember while writing our answers in the exam. Then comes the African Commission on Human and People Rights 1981. While we study the American and European system versus the African system, the biggest difference is they both had commissions as well as court, whereas Africa doesn't have any court. It just has African Commission on Human and People Rights. That's one very important aspect you need to remember. And the actual establishment of this particular organization was on 21st October 1986. And the current location of this particular commission is Banjul, which is in Gambia. The important character that we need to remember is African Commission is a quasi-judicial body. That way it is not a body which can implement the laws. But it definitely has a chain of command by making suggestion to the assembly of heads of the state and government so that they can act accordingly. It doesn't act directly on any of the laws but it can definitely influence. That is what we need to remember. I will discuss the structure of the commission and composition in my next slide but for now let us focus on the three important functions of this particular commission. The first function is promoting and protecting human rights and collective rights. That is very very important function of the commission to promote and protect the rights of the people individually as well as collectively. The second function is to interpret the African Charter and the last one is to consider the individual complaints if there is any human rights violation. Under third one, you can see other aspects also like investigating those human rights violations and creating and approving programs of actions towards encouraging human rights and set up effective communication between them and states to get first-hand information on violation of human rights. These are the three major functions of the African Commission. That is very, very important. Now let's look at the composition and structure of this particular commission. As far as the composition or the structure is concerned, the first important answer that we should have with us is how many members are there in the commission. The answer is 11 members and how are they coming to this office? They are all elected by secret ballot system by the OAU assembly members. That is very very important aspect and what is the duration of these members? They can be in office for 6 years and one another important aspect you need to remember is they can always be re-elected. That is a very very important aspect. Then comes the eligibility criteria. What are the important eligibilities that a person should have to become the member of this particular commission? First and foremost, he or she should be an African personality with highest reputation. They should have a highest morality background or integrity or impartiality and mainly they should have sufficient competence when it comes to the matters of human or people rights. That's very very important. And if you are having sufficient legal experience or if you are coming from legal background, you will definitely have special priority. That is one another interesting aspect. And finally, one state can have only one representative at a time in the commission. No state can have two representatives at a time in the commission. That's one another aspect that we need to remember.
once after the election of these 11 members are over they among themselves are selecting a chairperson and a vice chairperson and this is a two years office and they can be renewed also or a new person can become a chairperson or a vice chairperson now the members are to enjoy full independence in discharge of their duties that is one another important aspect and this is all about the composition or the structure or the eligibility criteria to become the member of the commission that brings an end to our discussion on this particular topic i will come up with new topic in my next class thank you so much for all your support in a way of liking and commenting to my videos i am hoping that you are sharing my videos also please subscribe my channel and again please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my channel and thanks again